Nayan Hub. Hello, welcome to SIP Nayan Hub. In this presentation, I am going to start to discuss uh, another topic that is covered in uh, the new basic mathematics course in the tertiary education of the Philippines, which is called Mathematics in the Modern World. So this is actually a required chapter in this course. It's called Problem Solving and Reasoning. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss first the two different types of reasoning. They're called inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. These types of reasoning are important when we uh, do problem solving with different types of uh, problems which we will be encountering later. Definition of inductive reasoning this is a process of reaching a general conclusion by examining uh, specific examples. So we start with our specific examples, we observe them, we study them, and then based from the results of this observation, we now give our conclusion. So to better understand uh, inductive reasoning, let us provide an example. We have here a sequence of numbers. Our goal is to identify the next term after 15. So we are given the first two, four, five terms, the first five terms of our sequence. And our goal is to continue giving the terms of this sequence. We can answer this problem using inductive reasoning. And we do this by investigating uh, the first few terms of uh, this sequence. So we can start uh, by identifying the difference of the first two consecutive terms, that's three and one, that is obviously two. The difference of six and three is three, that of 10 and six is four, and then 15 and 10 is five. So we see here a pattern we can now conclude by examining the differences of any two consecutive numbers. It seems that those differences follow another sequence and what is a sequence it's actually following uh the natural the set of natural numbers chronologically starting with two so that by inductive reasoning uh the next difference here after five should be six and so the next term after 15 should be 15 plus six that gives us 21. let us have another example Given a circle and a dot or dots on the circle, draw all the possible line segments, then count the number of regions formed. Start at 1 as the number of dots and then 2 and then we proceed by adding more points. So this is the instruction. Let us count the number of uh, regions that is formed based on the segments that are created by joining the points that we put on the circle. What does this problem mean? Uh, it's actually referring to a, an observation, an experiment regarding the number of points and the number of regions created using our geometrical objects here. We have a circle, we have a dot or points on the circle, and then we create lines using those points and then count the number of regions created. So starting with one point on the circle, we see here the point. Of course, the number of regions would still be 1. So it's the same circle. Let us proceed adding another point, this point here. So we can now create one line segment that is a chord. And that creates two uh, regions in a circle. So it divides a circle into two regions. And therefore, the number of regions here is 2. What if we make the number of dots 3, then we could create 3 line segments out of that 3 points. Those 3 line segments will divide the circle into 4 different regions. We can see here those regions, region 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there are 4 different regions. Let us continue observing uh, some specific examples. Let's add uh, more points. Let's make it four. How many regions are created? It's illustrated here that there should be eight. And then what if there are five points? Again, it's illustrated in this figure that there are 16 uh, regions created. We can now give a conclusion 
about the relationship of the number of points and the number of regions created. Obviously, if you put more points on the circle, the number of regions uh, will also increase. But specifically, how exactly is the number of uh, regions related to the number of points? Let us uh, observe uh, how the number of regions is increased by increasing the points or the dots. From 1, it became 2. And then from 2, the number of regions created is 4. And then from 4, it became 8. And then from 8, it became 16. So the question actually here is, how many regions can we create based from the number of points that we put on the circle? So it seems that the next element here in our observation of the first few specific examples basically or logically we would say that it should be 32 it seems that uh, it is doubling from 1 it became 2 and then it became 4 and then 8 and then 16 however there are actually 31 not 32 uh, number of regions if the number of dots on the circle is 6 we can uh, verify uh, using this figure here so what is the point of this example when we use inductive reasoning because we are simply investigating few specific examples to give a conclusion there are times that we can be wrong and why is that i mean the, the conclusion that we derive that we generate by observing specific examples that could be uh, wrong it's not 100 percent correct that's actually one of the disadvantage of using inductive reasoning when we give conclusions conclusions based on inductive reasoning may be wrong that's what i mentioned and uh, the conclusion the statement that we gather by using inductive reasoning is called a conjecture it's not something that is 100% true a conjecture is a statement that has to be uh, proven further by some uh, better strategies apart from inductive reasoning so in the first example we were lucky to provide a very good conclusion uh, nobody I think will question us that the pattern is that pattern really but again, uh, when we use inductive reasoning, we can be wrong. What is the other type of reasoning? We call it the deductive reasoning. This time, we reach a conclusion not by examining specific examples, but by applying a general assumption or a procedure or a principle. Let me give you an example for this type of reasoning. So I have here uh, some instructions. We are going to do this one. Pick a number, multiply the number by 8, etc. To compare the two types of reasoning, inductive and deductive, I'm going to show you how we might uh, conclude if we use inductive reasoning and how we might conclude if we use deductive reasoning and let us compare uh, the answers. So let's start with uh, inductive reasoning. The first instruction here is to pick a number. So by inductive reasoning, I want to start with few specific examples i'm going to pick a random number i'm going to pick five you can pick any other number aside from five you can choose six or seven or eight or any other number and then the next step is to multiply it by eight and that would give us 40 five times eight is 40 the third instruction here is to add six to the product so the product is 40 we add six that's 46 and then divide the sum by two so we have 23 46 divided by 2 is 23 subtract 3 so that gives us 20. now we compare the number that we pick with the result after doing these instructions we can say that the result which is 20 is uh, four times the original number five what if we perform the same instructions but this time we're going to uh, make use of deductive reasoning before we compare the original number from that of the the resulting number so a student that is using deductive reasoning might do the following when he will be instructed to pick a number he will not pick a specific 
a number like this one five but we'll use an idea that would represent any uh, kind of number suppose that number is n so n is not a specific number it's a general uh, representation of any kind of a number so starting from n we multiply it by 8 just like we did here so 8 times n is 8n and then you add 6 we have 8n plus 6 divided by 2 how do we divide this by 2? We divide 8n by 2, that's 4n. Divide 6 by 2, that's 3. And then maintain the operation here, it's addition. And then we subtract 3 minus 3. So we are actually left with 4n here. Now, how do we compare the original number, which is n, to the resulting number, 4n? We would have the same result. If we compare n to 4n, obviously the resulting number is 4 times bigger than n, 4n. So using the same reasoning here, we are able to give the same conclusion. However, our reasoning might be different. And as we presented a while back, uh, using inductive reasoning might give us a, a false conclusion. That's why uh, some would prefer uh, deductive reasoning when we uh, give our conclusions. Although the advantage of using inductive reasoning is actually easier to use and it might be the available method that we can use to produce or to generate a conclusion. So these are the two types of reasoning that we may apply when we solve problems later. Uh, let us uh, test ourselves if we can differentiate uh, the application of the two types of reasoning. So I'm going to read to you a statement or a paragraph and then our job is to identify whether the applied reasoning is deductive or inductive. Let's start with the first one. During the past 10 years, a tree has produced plums every other year. Last year, the tree did not produce plums. So the conclusion is, this year, the tree will produce plums. What is the reasoning applied? Did it use the investigation of specific examples and then give a conclusion or started with the general assumption and then give a conclusion? Based from the first phrase, during the past 10 years, we are only investigating the first we are only investigating the past 10 years, so those are the specific examples to generate this conclusion. So the reasoning applied here is inductive. All home improvements cost more than the estimate. The contractor estimated that my home improvement will cost $35,000. Thus, my home improvement will cost more than $35,000. We have a clue here, the first sentence is a general assumption. It's saying that all home improvements cost more than the estimate. So that is our clue to say that the applied reasoning here is deductive. Third, all Janet Ivanovich novels are worth reading. The novel 12 Sharp is a Janet Ivanovich novel. Thus, the novel 12 Sharp is worth reading. Again, the first sentence is a general statement. It's not an investigation of a specific novels. It's saying that all are worth reading. So the conclusion is uh, derived by using deductive reasoning. Uh, I think this is the last one. I know I will win a jackpot on this slot machine in the next 10 tries. That's the conclusion. What's the basis? Because it has not paid out any money during the last 45 tries. So by considering the last 45 tries, we come up with the conclusion that we will win a jackpot on the slot machine. We used specific examples, 45 tries, to give a conclusion. So obviously, we are reasoning inductively. I'm going to end the presentation here. I'm going to see you in the next video to discuss uh, problem solving. I will see you there.